Okay, so I finally received the Hisense PX3 Pro here in the UK. This is specifically the model number PX3 TUK Pro. It differs slightly from the US version and you may have seen a lot of reviews of this online, but they are specifically for the US ones. The UK one has a couple of main differences. First is being that this has Vida OS, whereas the US one has Google TV in, built into it. And secondly, the remote control is a lot longer. It has more features and I'm going to run through and showcase everything that this can do as well. Now I'm going to be setting this up with my 100 inch Vividstorm ALR floor rising screen, but initially I bought this for my Vividstorm laser TV cabinet just below because the projector fits directly into that. It syncs with the screen and there's some flaws that actually allowed me to spend a few hours yesterday trying to get the projection to fit the screen, but it wasn't working. That was primarily due to how the keystone correction is and with the lack of any type of zoom feature for it to actually fit to the screen. The projection kept coming out far and wide outside of the screen. No matter what I tried, it was very difficult for me to fit it within that 100 inches. So unfortunately I won't be able to put it inside the cabinet and I will just put it on top of the cabinet. But the only reason I'm mentioning that is because Hisense do mention on their website the distance from the screen to give you between 80 to 150 inches of projection. But what they don't mention is the height of the projector from wherever your screen is on the wall or if it's like a motorized screen like this. There's some limitations that are going to be difficult because of the lack of the keystone and the zoom features. But nonetheless, this is an insane projector. It's got a lot of features in there. It is packed with really high quality visuals and audio. So let's go ahead and set it up. But first we'll take a closer look at the design and the key specs, and then we'll go ahead and run through the Vida OS, show you all the settings, and then play back some content. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's just take a closer look at the design whilst I show you the key specs in the sidebar. So this is a very premium looking design there with the Hisense logo. These do have LED indicators on both sides, which are just there. They do light up to indicate that the projector is on. And when you do power it off, it does blink with the red lights as well. So I think that's a nice touch. You have some logos indented in here. It's IMAX enhanced, Dolby Vision Atmos, Vida 4K HDR. And this also is the world's first designed for Xbox certification USD projector. So this is going to be really powerful for gaming if that is something that you want to use this for. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ports on the back. Okay, so you have a headphone port, a USB port, Ethernet, digital audio out for your optical inputs. You have a HDMI 1 and HDMI 2 for ultra high speed transfers. And then you also have HDMI 3, which is eARC 4K at 60 Hertz. So if you want to connect this to a soundbar, then you can do that. Then you have the power port just there on the bottom left. On the left hand side, you do have the power button as well if you want to turn this on manually. At the bottom, you do have these four quarter 20 inch threads there. So if you do want to mount this on a specific plate or even ceiling mount this, then you can do that. You also have these legs as well that you can screw and give you a bit of elevation just to get it at the right angle. And finally, the remote control, it has dedicated Disney Plus, YouTube, Prime Video, Netflix. It also has Deezer for music and a kids button there as well. All of the other buttons, pretty standard as you'd expect. But this also has a numbered keypad because Vida OS and the PX3 TUK version also allows you to have live TV. So you can actually change the channels with those numbers. You have the buttons here, P mode and S mode. These stand for picture mode and sound mode. So you can very quickly and easily change the different types of modes. Then you have this panel just here at the bottom. This is a solar panel. So you can actually charge this remote control using the sunlight, which I think is a very nice touch. If you don't want to do that, then this is rechargeable via USB-C. It doesn't come with a USB-C cable in the box, but I think that's much better than just having two AAA batteries, which most projector remotes require. So now let's go ahead and set this up with my screen and let's take a look at Vida OS and we'll play back some really high quality content and see how you find it. Okay, so I finally got it set up and you can see this probably doesn't fill the entire screen and that is just one of those flaws that I'm gonna be talking about later in this video. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and showcase Vida OS. It's very similar to Google TV. You do have all of your favorite apps right there front and center. It's very easy to navigate. It's lightweight and responsive, so I can go into YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus. All of these are very accessible quite easily. You can reorder the menu here. You have the options to get recommendations for your previous watches and see what you want to watch next. I'm gonna run through the settings. This is probably going to be the key thing that most people are interested in. So if we go into picture mode, you can see from picture mode, you can select multiple different modes here as I'm just displaying on the screen. 
If you go into picture mode settings, this is where you can do any manual adjustments as well with things like the brightness, contrast, saturation, etc. If you do use this for gaming, you do have some game settings right here. Game mode I've left on auto, but if you do go in there, you can turn it on and off as well. DLP turbo mode, you can turn that on. If you go into intelligent mode settings, you have AI picture optimization, which will recognize the screen of whatever content you're playing back, and it would enhance the picture quality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on because I really want to showcase how the AI feature works in this as well, and how great the vivid colors are on the visual content. You also have content type auto detection, which I will also leave on. Then you have aspect ratio. This is one of those things that for some reason, it doesn't work. If this had the zoom feature on this, then I would be able to put my projector in my cabinet and it would allow all of you that want to reposition this a lot lower down from your screen to be able to zoom out. Now this doesn't have any digital zoom or optical zoom capabilities, which is such a shame because now I have to deal with this not filling my entire screen. I can go to 16 by nine, four by three, 21 by nine, but then there's a couple of options here, movie zoom, dot to dot. The weird thing is no matter which one I select, so I can do four by three, this movie zoom. I don't even know what these last two are. So if any of you watching this know what these are specifically for, then do drop a comment and let me know. But when I do select either of these, nothing makes a difference. So when I play back content from YouTube, for example, regardless of which aspect ratio I've selected, they all look the same. So either this is broken or they are waiting to do a fix for this. The software on this is fully up to date and I will be showcasing that, but nonetheless, this is one of the things that I think is wrong with the projector. Having said that, when we go into screen, this is again what's caused me a lot of pain to try and get this to work with my screen at the right size. Now projection mode, I'll leave that as front, but you can have the option to mount this wherever you want. Screen type, I've set this as the high gain ALR screen too. You can also set it from one of these three options. Automatic geometric correction. This is what essentially replaces the auto keystone correction that you're probably familiar with, with most common and probably 95% of all the projectors that I've seen. This is a bit weird. You have to use this to just level this blue bar around your screen. When you go next, you scan the QR code with your phone. It has to be on the same Wi-Fi network as your projector is. And once you've done that, it takes you to a website on your phone. You have to take a photo from that website of what the geometric screen looks like. I'm gonna show you a quick example now by just scanning this QR code. So I'm just gonna do this. It will take me to a website. And then you see these 16 geometric shapes here. I have to take a photo, upload it, and it will automatically try to keystone correct it itself. Every time I do this, it doesn't work that great. And what's annoying is when I do go into the manual correction, if I select any one of these eight points, and if I just hold down the directional button to drag it in, this is the slowest movement of any keystone correction I've ever seen. Now, when I say slow, this moves at probably just one pixel per second. And if I wanted to make it go further to its maximum point, then I could be spending five minutes just holding down the button before it actually gets to the point I want it to. And if you do that for every single point, that's at least half an hour you're spending just doing manual adjustments. So let me show you. I'm pressing left. Can you see the screen moving slightly? This is how slow it's moving. And whilst you're just watching this video, you may not even see it moving, but very close up, I can see it moving very tiny pixel by pixel, frame by frame. This is not great. And I think they also need to fix this because they do mention you have to hold it for quick adjustment but this is by means not a quick adjustment. This is the slowest adjustment I've ever seen. So manual keystone correction also is not great on this projector. But likewise, you can also do focus adjustments, eye protection, you can turn this on. So if anyone walks in front of the laser, it dims the screen. If you go into sound settings, sound mode is on standard, but you can also set this to various different modes. I may put it onto theater mode because I want the maximum bass response for my movies. You've got some sound mode settings right here audio output coming directly from the projector. You have the option to connect it via a eARC HDMI input, or if you want some Bluetooth headphones and you just wanna to listen to it in private, then you can connect a Bluetooth speaker from here as well. Audio output settings, there's some settings here, but I've just got Dolby Atmos selected to on. Connection, this is where you have your device name, Wi-Fi, and all those other Bluetooth connections and HDMI connection settings from here. 
accessibility options. I won't run through too much of these. You can see the menu items there. System, if we go into advanced settings, these are some of the options that you can see from here if you want to personalize anything. And then finally support, system update. You can see if I check for update, this is the latest version. And so far, I hope they update and fix all of those problems with the geometric connections and maybe add a zoom feature in there as well. So everything looks great. If we go back to the homepage, now there's a lot of daylight coming into the room and you can see this is very visible. It's super clear, it's vibrant, it's sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and play back some content from YouTube and I'm gonna leave one of my microphones nearby to the projector. But just to note, this is very loud and I'm not gonna be able to even go to 50% volume because that's how powerful the audio is. It does have Harman Kardon speakers in there. It is Dolby Atmos, so it's gonna be one of the best sounding home theater maybe even IMAX experiences in your house that you're going to get. So let's go ahead and play back that now. In my living room, the colors come alive. Laser TV shining, taking me for a ride. Immersive movie mode, I'm in a different zone. The screen comes to life. Like I'm sitting front row Switching to game mode The intensity goes high Every shot, every move feels like I can't fly With joystick in hand, I'm the hero of the game Laser TV takes me there, no two rounds are the same Neon dreams, taking me away Okay, you saw how great that sounded and how great that looked visually. Now what I want to do is to showcase the full IMAX cinematic experience is I want to make it blackout in this room, make it very dark so you can really get the pure essence of the 4K triple laser experience. So let me go ahead and do that now and I'll play back another demo video from the Dolby YouTube channel directly. From the beginning, we've asked the impossible questions. How do we spark awe? How do we evoke wonder? And how do we create an experience that takes you there? That immerses you in the moment? Thank you. 
next. Okay, yet again, you saw how great that looked. Hopefully everything was so clear with the way you're watching it and you heard how great the audio sounds. I couldn't go more than maybe 25% on the volume and it was still so loud, it was just filling the entire room with that type of cinematic audio and really high quality bass. And likewise, if you do use this for gaming, because this is the world's first design for Xbox certified USC projector, then equally it's going to be as great of an experience as it would be natively if you are playing directly on your home TV. So let's just take a look at an example of how a game would look like. And there we go, can't find any faults with the gaming. It is pretty much almost lag free. And if you are going to use this for gaming, then you are going to get that really great experience that you're looking for. So overall, triple laser, 4K, 3000 ANSI lumens. What more can you ask for from a home cinematic experience? This is absolutely great. Apart from those flaws that I already mentioned about getting this positioned exactly with your screen, with geometric corrections, and also with the lack of a zoom feature in there, I think this is also a very great option for anyone that is looking for a 4K UST projector for your home. Now the final thing I'll also say is that with AirPlay, this is actually very responsive, very smooth. So I'm going to share my screen directly from my phone. So I've loaded up, there you go, it's called Smart TV. And this is super responsive. So if you want to play back anything from your phone for example, if I go to YouTube, play one of my videos, it just works like it's natively playing directly on the projector. So if you are looking to screen share from your phone, then this is also a very great option because this is one of the fastest and smoothest AirPlay experiences I've had with any projector that I've reviewed. So for me, that is also a big win. So hopefully you found that review useful of the PX3 TUK Pro from Hisense. I'm very happy with this. I hope they fix a lot of the flaws that I mentioned with some software updates in the near future. But nonetheless, if you have any other questions that you'd like to know about this projector, then as always, drop a comment down below. Make sure to like this video and make sure to subscribe. I always review the latest projectors when they do hit the market, so make sure you don't miss any of those ones. And I will catch you all at the next one. Take care.